Is it easy to do this kind of effects in Blender? Yeah, it is. In this video, I will show you how to do this in geometry nodes in the easiest way possible, so stay put and let us roll. Let's delete everything beside the default cube since it's too cute and try to scale it a bit to give us more area to work with. And do not forget to apply scale after you adjust the cube size. Now go to geometry nodes from up top and close the info side on the left because we don't need it. No one needs it. Once you're done, select the cube and hit the new button. It's a big button, so don't miss it. This way we add two nodes, the group input, which is the base cube geometry, and the group output, which is what we'll have at the end, so everything we will add is going to land on this line between them. Let's start with the two most famous nodes. So hit Shift A to add the distribute points on faces and the instance on points if you didn't catch their function from the name, the first one will scatter or distribute hollow points on each face of the geometry, while the instance on point node gives you the ability to swipe those hollow points with anything you want, like trees, grass or buildings. Once you add the instance on point node, the shape will disappear since the instance slot is empty now and we will fill it. But first, let us get the main cube back since we need it and it's with simple node called Join Geometry. Kind of work like the Mix Shader. So place it right after the Instance node and plug the group input back in it to get the cube. We will continue the work with those two. Let's assign the Instance object. You can use as an instance any object that you have in the scene, or you can add one from inside the Geometry node. And for this effect, let's add an Icosphere node, then plug it inside the Instance slot. In the Icosphere node, we can control both the shape size along with its resolution, so you can leave it on low resolution for now and crack it up before render. The radius value will also change along the way, so for now, just leave it at a visible value. To get the effect, we need an object to work as a force. For that, I will add another sphere in the scene. We can also lock the Geometry node window on the Cube node tree, so we don't lose it each time we select another object. To get the last sphere inside the Geometry node, you just need to drag it from the layers to the nodes area. And the aim here is to use this sphere object as a force affecting the instant scale. But to do that, we need another node called Geometry Proximity. Look it up in the Add Menu search bar and connect the object geometry to its target. After that, we can take the proximity distance and plug it into the instant scale. Too many words, but it's super easy to do. Now you can see something happened but it's kind of fixed, so moving the sphere won't do anything to fix this, which is the first obstacle you might face. You only need to change the object info node from original to relative type. And now your problem is gone, and the sun shall rise again over Gondor. I mean, easy fix, right? Don't mind me, I just watch Star Wars. So one might say I don't want the effect like this, I want it the opposite way. Is it possible? Well, yes, it is. See, in geometry nodes, there's no invert node. But you have two ways to invert the effect. One is by using the map range node. We can add it after the proximity and it just plug itself. Then with the last two values at the bottom, we can flip the direction from one to zero. This way, we get the effect around the sphere shape only. We can also control the area around the sphere if you want to focus the effect. And we do this with the top two values in the map range. You kind of need to close the distance between the two values to get a focused effect. Another way to do this without the map range node is with the color ramp. You just add it in the same place after the proximity, and then with this small arrow icon, you can hit the flip option. After that, you use the black and white colors to control the effect area, similar to the last node but with more flexibility. Some of you might need to use an empty to not show the force object or the sphere that we used, however. With this way, once you added the empty and dragged it to the nodes area, then plugged it into the proximity node, you will see that nothing happened. Then you start cursing at me. In this case, not the cursing I won't forgive you, but in the case of using an empty, you need first to switch the proximity nodes and put it on points. Then before the proximity, we need to add another node called mesh line 
With this, we need to plug the object info location to the mesh line start location slot. Make the count value on one to focus the effect around the empty object alone. And now you have it working. You just need to adjust the color ramp along with the icosphere node's radius and distribute node's density. You can also hit the M key on the color ramp node to mute it and see it with the opposite effect. Now, in the case that we showed at the start of the video with the character walking, the process is the first one we did. I just imported a character that I snatched of Mixamo. It's free, so you can go down to the descriptions link to get the animation you want. I placed the character over the main cube, then drag the geometry part of this animation and use it as the object info node. Put it on relative, and here you have it. With this easy method, you can go back at any time and change the instance shape and size, change the object which affects those instances, and even change your life. Now, before I tell you the last thing in this video, take a moment to sip some tea and subscribe. Your grammar will be so proud of you. Some might say, how can I give materials to this? And to those people I say, good question. See if you want to give a material to the main cube or even the character. The way is easy. You just go to the material section and assign to it a new material. However, my dear fellow, to add a material to the Icosphere instances, we need a node called set material. Usually we plug it after the thing we need to shade, so place it after the Icosphere node. In it, we can assign any material we have in the scene, so I will add another material in the main cube. This will be unassigned one to the cube, so it won't affect it. Then we can use it for the instances in the set material node. Quick tip, if your animation frame rate is lagging, change the play back to frame dropping mode to view the animation smoothly. And that's it. Like and share if you care. And see you guys in the next video. Stay sharp. Goodbye.